It's Friday and you're watching Freight Waves Now. I'm your host, Anthony Smith, and coming up, Andrew Cox is gonna give us a DHL supply chain pricing power index update. But first, we're gonna to go to Zach Strickland with a carry update brought to you by Powerfleet. Stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome to your Friday carrier update presented by Powerfleet. I'm Zach Strickland. So tender rejection rates uh, finally for all three modes have started to increase. So we've got reefer up there at the top, van down there in the second line there with the blue mountains, and then finally down here in flatbed land, uh, we have jumped up over 7% for the first time since early July, around the 4th of July holiday. Obviously a uh, supply side issue there, but this is the first non-holiday real big push. I mean, if you look all the way back since that little March bump, which did not impact flatbed near as much uh, as the other two modes. And so this is a good signal uh, for us in terms of looking for the future of freight because that means that a lot of the industrial, potentially construction sector uh, ha has started to turn back on again. We talked about this in a few other indexes thus far, but the flatbed uh, tender rejection rate, a good one to watch uh, for those types of movements. Again, Van and Reefer have been active for a lot, long, a lot longer than Flatbed at this point. Uh, so both of those continue to be you know, the real drivers of Titan capacity in the market right now. Uh, but Flatbed jumping in just means that we may be seeing a little bit more sustainability to the market itself in terms of how tight uh, can the spot market get for all of freight. Looking across the country, I've got our outbound tender market share pulled up here. Where are we seeing some of that growth over the last week, the, you know, disproportionate to the rest of the country? If you're a carrier out there looking for, to target some of these key markets, that are growing a little bit faster than somebody else. Uh, the, anything in blue on the map is gonna be the market to, to target. Anything in the green here, these are gonna be the markets that week over week we have seen the most significant uh, increases in volumes relation to, in relation to the rest of the market. Ontario, Atlanta. Atlanta has been a little bit of a softer market here over the, over the last week or so. Rejection rates are still high, but still a lot of volume coming out of there, so you can rely on that at least for now. Maybe not getting quite the spot market rate that you're gonna get out of Ontario, uh, but at the same time, uh, volumes continue, continue to be strong in two of our biggest markets in the country. Uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, the Northeast over there, really uh, continuing its, its torrid pace of increase. Over the last couple of weeks, we've noticed uh, Northeastern volumes and tender rejection rates themselves have really been expanding uh, after a little quiet lull period where the West Coast took over. Uh, and then of course, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Atlanta had, had really the, the attention of the freight market for the longest period of time. Uh, Columbus, Volumes may be dropping there, but tender rejection rates are actually quite active. So, and again, volumes are dropping relative to the rest of the uh, United States, not necessarily in, in absolute value. Looking at our weighted rejection index, these are gonna be your markets to target for that com combination of market share and tender rejection rate increase week over week. Uh, we show this one often just because this one's going to help you utilize any kind of freight on the spot market. These are gonna be the markets. If you look here, the top list is all green except for one Indianapolis down there. That just means that the WRI has fallen day over day in Indianapolis. Just means that week over week, we're not seeing as significant of a change, but everywhere else on the top uh, markets of the map, all the way from Ontario, California, down here to Little Rock, Arkansas, look over in the blue markets, out there on the map and you'll be able to see, you know, where could I potentially see uh, more opportunity on the spot market because it's a combination of volume and rejection rate, uh, you know, prevalent. So that means that you're gonna have a lot more freight moving out of those markets as well, giving you a little bit more. Twin Falls, Idaho. Now it's always interesting to me when I see a blue smaller market on this map because these are, you have to have a large tender rejection rate increase to really show up on here if you're a Bismarck, North Dakota or Great Falls, Montana, uh, and even on uh, the Twin Falls, Idaho map. So let's take a quick look into Twin Falls, Idaho and see what's going on there. A lot of the Twin Falls uh, destabilization is coming from the reefer market. Again, this time of year, you know, a lot of carriers up there do know that August is one of the hottest reefer times of year for the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. We have a lot of harvests that start to kick off in August up there. Reefer rejection rates really starting to take off there. They jumped up over 58% uh, volumes as well, jumping up uh, out, of, out of the Twin Falls market. You look at some of the uh, lengths of haul here, they're, they're all pretty much lighting up except your long and tweener haul, which is what you would expect out of this market because there's just not a lot of closer markets out in, in Twin Falls. So got to travel a long distance uh, out of the market in general. And that'll do it for today's carrier update. 
The comprehensive logistics offerings from PowerFleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with PowerFleet. Welcome to the DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index Update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what's the latest? Well, we kept it at 80 this week, Anthony, and it's not that we had any negative news for the carriers or, or that much positive news. It's just kind of solidifying in their, their positive place right here. They're, they're in a dominant, uh, a pretty well-positioned uh, place in the pricing power. Uh, we can move on to why they're in that pricing power position, and it's just a continuation, more of the same. Volumes are continuing on the tear, and this is without that other round of stimulus that we were kind of expecting right now. Uh, consumers are still spending money. As we talked about yesterday, they're filling that service gap uh, with more goods. A lot of, We are seeing that durable goods demand kind of trickle off a little bit. Um, but it stayed uh, positive year over year. So that's the reason we've had some really strong volumes. And carriers really just have a lot of options right now in the market. And this is at unprecedented levels. This is something that you do see this as being something sustainable in the coming weeks. Well, I mean, I thought I didn't know if it was sustainable three weeks ago, and here we are continuing to push forward. So it's continuing to impress and, and really uh, strong volume throughput throughout the country in many regions uh, all over, really. Uh, and, you know, carriers are exercising those options. We're seeing that in the outbound tender, volume, outbound tender rejection index, rather. Uh, this blue line is our 2020, uh, orange line being 2018. Really, the important thing here to note is that 2018 was that banner year where we had rejections in between 20 and 25 percent the entire year. We've now crossed over that 20, <clears throat> 2018 number. Uh, although in 2018, we kind of got some easing comps towards the back end of the year, which uh, we're taking advantage of now. But in any case, it is noteworthy to see tender rejections now above and staying above that 2018 number. Got you. And when we're looking at these numbers moving forward, I think Zach kind of mentioned some of it in his segment. It's interesting to see how the two primary sectors are really kind of moving between industrials and consumer goods. And it really seems like consumer activity is really still driving this, as you said, in spite of no, there being no additional stimulus as of yet. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I Consumers are spending money, and, and that's a good thing. We look at that Bank of America data, and we see that uh, we have been sideways since about the middle of uh, middle of July. Uh, but again, that's that's sideways at a year-over-year -year positive, about half percent or one percent. So, get pretty strong for for the environment, really. Um, and then moving on, this was one thing that I was a bit worried about. This is our truck stop uh, spot volume um, indexes. Uh, we've got 100 lane pairings here. About two weeks ago, I started seeing these go blood red, I mean, all across the board. And that was a, a worry for me. I was thinking that maybe the, the spot market was starting to slow down uh, and that that would be a leading indicator for the whole market. But we had a big bounce back this week. We see, I mean, markets up in a huge way. We've green across the board uh, besides some, some scattered red. But a really strong point here to see spot volumes uh, picking back up. And what are we seeing um, pricing? Wise. Well, pricing-wise, we are another noteworthy thing is that we've seen uh, DA, this is the DAT um, futures prices. We've seen them climb above the 2018 number. Now, again, we had some easing comps uh, towards the back end of the year. We saw that summer spike in 2018, but we're now reaching above that level. The, the spot rates are at the highest point they've been in the last two years. Carriers are in a really nice position right now. And it almost seems as though there's no room for any kind of seasonality now. This is just uncharted territory. We're looking at anywhere from volumes, uh, rejections, and pricing. Yeah, I mean, it's just a continuing sludge upwards. We, we're seeing a band up in spot prices. We're going to see how that translates into the contract pricing market. That's something that uh, my team is, is really focused on right now. We did a, a survey a few <clears throat> back at the end of last year, and we asked how long do contract prices have to, how long do spot prices have to be up before contract prices uh, eventually band up as well? And they said about three to six months. So we're, we're getting towards that the, the front end of that number. So eventually I think that we're going to get to a point if volumes stay elevated, rejections stay elevated, I think we're going to see a really a melt up of contract pricing towards the end of the year. Excellent. And you mentioned you and your team. Where can people find more? Yeah, you can always go to freightwaves.com forward slash passport uh, for all the latest. Excellent. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to do it for this DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index update. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest. Thanks so much for tuning in for this Friday edition of Freight Waves Now. That's going to wrap it up for this episode, but the fun doesn't stop here. We're always streaming around the clock, so check out our Freight Waves TV app on all your favorite platforms, including Apple TV. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.